Wednesday's favorable German court ruling is a major step forward for European Central Bank head Mario Draghi's proposed unlimited sovereign bond purchase program to rescue the Eurozone. But even if implemented, it misses the most pressing problem, a desperate need for short-term economic growth. The best way to achieve that, a temporary exit from the Eurozone by Spain, Greece, and possibly Italy, that would allow for major devaluations, says Wharton Finance Professor Franklin Allen. Once growth redresses regional imbalances, the countries could rejoin the currency union. So let's pursue this issue of growth a little bit more, because this, this is really the central issue in the whole crisis at the moment. What these countries need to do is to grow out of the problem, and that's the real way to get rid of the debt issue that faces the periphery countries. If you look at what's happening, though, this is not what's occurring. In fact, if anything, we're going the other way. What seems to have been the case is that the official sector has done a very poor job of forecasting actual growth rates when austerity policies are implemented. It seems that they are assuming that markets will clear and the economy will get back to its traditional kinds of operation fairly quickly, but that simply hasn't happened. What we've seen instead is this downward spiral whereby governments cut expenditure and then that unfortunately leads to a drop in GDP. They then have to cut more and so on. In the meantime, unemployment goes up dramatically. So in Greece, it's approaching 25%. Overall, youth unemployment is also already over 50%. In Spain, it's even worse. They're around 25%, and youth unemployment is over 50%. In some regions of Spain, like Andalusia, where I spent my summers in my youth, the unemployment rate is now 30%, the youth unemployment rate is 60%. These are figures that are much worse than we've had since the Great Depression, and even comparable in some, in some regions worse than that. So this is an awful time that they're going through. Now the question is, what are the growth policies? What could get growth going? My own view is that the kinds of policies that they're talking about, which is liberalizing markets, reforming taxation systems, reforming education systems, increasing competition. These, these are good policies, but they take significant amounts of time to implement and have their effect. The real problem is that the one short-term policy that has a big effect is devaluation. And what they need to do is to accept they made a mistake in designing the Eurozone. They don't yet have what they need to actually have the Eurozone with all these diverse economies participate when there's this kind of shock. And the countries that are in trouble need to leave temporarily, I, I would stress, just in the same way that ER in at the start of the ERM in the 1990s, Italy had to drop out. That didn't mean that the project was finished, it just meant that there was a delay. What we need now is for Greece, Spain, and maybe Italy to leave so that they can then devalue significantly. Then they will start to grow. If we look at Argentina, they were in a very similar kind of recession, very deep recession. Once they defaulted and devalued significantly, they started to grow. Over the last decade, they doubled it, their economy in size since the trough, and they, that's despite very bad economic policies. If you go back to the 1930s, a number of people like Jeffrey Sachs and Barry Eichengreen argue that we were better off to have countries leaving the gold standard because they could then start to recover and grow again. And I think if you look at the evidence, there's significant amount of evidence that devaluation is the best way to get growth quickly. And I think that's what we need to see and not this continual attempt by 
the governments to have monetary policies or austerity policies. None of these policies are being very effective at the moment.